Hi everyone, welcome to our lesson on alkanes today. We're going to start with conformational isomers. If you take a molecule like ethane, two carbons, six hydrogens, you notice there's a single bond and there's free rotation here. So if this molecule has energy and it's rotating around, you might ask yourself, what are the different rotations that could happen? What are the different positions? If I took snapshots, would those snapshots look different at any point in time? And the answer is yes, you would get different positions and different relationships between the atoms. And chemists are interested in that because we want to try to understand what are the likely positions this molecule can be in or uh, what can some of those positions explain the behavior of this molecule. So those conformations, there are many kinds of conformations you can get. I'm going to show you two such conformations. One is the eclipsed conformation, and that's where the carbon in the front um, has hydrogens which are aligned with the hydrogens on the carbon in the back. So right here is a diagram of a sawhorse representation. You're looking at the carbon in the front with the bond pointed backward and here's the carbon in the back. Now if you were to take this and put a little disc in between these two carbons, you'll see that there's the front side of that and the back side of that. And that's what the Newman projection is here. You're looking at the carbon in the front right here, and it's attached to three hydrogens in an upside down Y shape. And then you've got the carbons in the back directly behind it. And you, you can't see that if it's perfectly aligned and you're looking straight on, right? But um, in order for you to know what's back there, we draw the atoms slightly askew, but it's really meant to represent them right behind and perfectly aligned. And so that's why it's called eclipsed. Now as I do rotations, I'll eventually get to a point where I find a staggered conformation, so the atoms are alternating. So you can see that here. You have a Y in the back, and you have an upside down Y in the front. And so this is called staggered, and notice that the hydrogens are evenly spaced apart as you go around. Well, you might ask yourself if the hydrogens are electron clouds and they repel each other, which of these conformations would be more stable? So that's going to be the staggered conformation because you have, let's say in the eclipse, you have alignment, so those electron clouds are close to each other and bumping into each other. So if you can just rotate this a little bit, then they have more space to spread out and less repulsion. So we call that kind of um, repulsion strain. Um, and specifically, this is due to e being eclipsed, so this is eclipsing strain or torsional strain. And you can relieve that strain by rotation. So this molecule preferred to be mostly in its staggered form, but it's free to rotate around. And it can, at any moment, you can catch it in the eclipsed, perhaps. So here is a potential energy curve. Let's say that you're starting with the eclipsed conformation where the two hydrogens up here, you're sort of holding the one in front and you're rotating the one in back, which I've highlighted in purple. So here, this is the one in back. And let's go from highest energy, because this is less stable due to more torsional strain. And as I rotate it, I get to the staggered. And then I rotate it, and now they're eclipsed again. And then I rotate it. So as you rotate, you go back and forth. And then there's a continuum of energy because I'm not going like this and then like this. I'm going through all the dihedral angles as you rotate. So as you grow the carbon chain, this can get more complicated because you have more bonds that rotate and you have many different bonds you can use to look through for your Newman projection. So you can cite down different bonds. So uh, let's take a look at carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, carbon 2 to 3. Let's cite down that bond. So if I take, so if I take carbon 2 and carbon 3 and I look down that bond, let's say your eye is right here and you're looking this way, right? there's many conformations that you can have for this. Let's start with one of the eclipsed conformations. Notice that the methyl group is pointing up on your first carbon, sec, carbon number two that you're looking at. So here is my sawhorse. CH3 is pointing up, 
And then in the back carbon, I have CH3 back here as well. Here's CH3. Okay, so you're looking through carbon 2 and carbon 3. Methyl group up in the front and up in the back. So in our Newman projection, you're going to see the methyl groups aligned and the hydrogens aligned. Now as you rotate this one in the back, you get the methyl group off to your right, okay, in the back. So I'm showing that right here. And I'm keeping the front straight and constant. So as I rotate this, notice that there's some strain here because these might bump into each other, okay? But they're better than when they were here and they were really bumping into each other when they were aligned. So now it's sort of, it's, a, it's off to the side. And it's staggered, so there's more room for everyone to breathe. So more room for those electron clouds to spread out. Now if I rotate again, I'm going to get eclipsed. Okay, so I'm rotating by what we call 60 degree uh, dihedral angle. So 60 degrees, 60 degrees, so that's 120 now. And in this 120, I've got my eclipse confirmation. Do you guys see that? So my methyl in the front is aligned with my hydrogen in the back. Okay, my hydrogen in the front right here is aligned, or actually you're right, okay, is aligned with the methyl also to the right but in the back. And so I'm showing those here. And then this hydrogen and this hydrogen are aligned and they are right here. Okay. So now I'm going to rotate it again another 60 degrees. So now I have 120 plus 60 is 180. Okay. So I've gone all the way around to 180 degrees. And this is called staggered as well, right? Because I've got my methyl up here and then I've got my hydrogen down here. And I've got in the back, I have a hydrogen up here, a methyl group pointing down. So when I translate this into my Newman projection, here's my front carbon with the methyl up here and my methyl pointed down in the back. And these methyls are 180 degrees dihedral angle from each other. So when you compare these, you'll see that there's more room here between the methyl groups. So there's less repulsion between these methyl groups than these methyl groups. We call this anti-conformation, when the two groups are 180 from each other. So these methyls are anti to each other, and these methyls are gauche. Now, if you took French class, you know gauche means left. So it means to the left, you have another group. And these are 60 degrees from each other. Now let's look at these four structures and try to figure out which one is the most stable structure and which one is the least stable structure. The most st stable structure is going to be staggered. And of these staggered, anti is the most stable. So I've marked it number one. Uh, number two is going to be the next staggered one. Eclipsed is more unstable than staggered because you have direct alignment and more torsional strain. For these two eclipsed, the two methyl groups next to each other or aligned are going to be the worst because they're going to bump into each other and create more repulsion. So I've marked that one number four and the other one could be number three. So when you do the profile, you're going to have four different values. So I've put my methyl-methyl eclipsed as the highest and my anti, staggered anti-methyl groups as the lowest. My other staggered one is a little bit higher, and my eclipsed other one is a little bit higher, or a lot higher, but a little bit less than this one. And then you can get a profile. Now I'm not interested in you graphing the actual potential energy values, although you can look up the relative values or the differences between like an eclipse and a staggered based on what groups are close to each other. You can estimate those based on energies if you were provided with those. Um, but I'm more interested in your getting a general feel for, you know, eclipse versus staggered, anti versus gauche, those kinds of things. So just be able to look at a structure and know of these two, this confirmations, this one's more stable than this one and why. So on this page are some practice problems, and I encourage you to give these a try. Um, just practice with drawing Newman projections into line bond notation and reverse, and then also um, being able to tell what the 
molecule is based on its Newman projection. And I'll give you a hint with the first one, because a lot of people have trouble at first knowing what to do. Just say that's this carbon, and then the carbon in the back is this carbon, which you can't see in the Newman projection. Then using that core, okay, using the core, figure out what's attached to the first carbon in the front and put it on this first one. And what's attached to the carbon in the back and put it on that one. And then see if you can figure out how to number it and how to name it. And for this one here, for part D, the clue is you're looking down carbon one to two. So you're sighting down this bond. So there's your I. All right, guys, we're back. And I'm going to show you how to do this one. The carbon in the front that I put a blue dot on, that's right here. And directly behind it is the carbon I can't see. It's directly behind this one. Now, in the front carbon, I have an ethyl group, and I've got this isopropyl group. So you've got to review. Isopropyl is three carbons in a Y shape, or fishtail. Then I have my hydrogen. I'm not going to draw my hydrogens. Um, in the back carbon, so the one behind here, I have a methyl group. So I'm going to come back here, draw methyl. And I've got two hydrogens I'm not going to draw. Now, when you number this, there's a longest chain of five. And you could either go one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five. And if I do it this way, I get a branch at carbon two instead of carbon three. So this is better. So this is called 3-ethyl-2-methylpentane. Remember, alphabetize that. All right, for the next one, you want to figure out whether this is the most stable Newman conformation or not. Now, I highlighted the bulkiest group in the front, the most branched group, is this isopropyl group. So that's going to provide the most strain, right? So I want that to be as far apart from the molecules, um, from the atoms on the other carbon, which is the methyl group. So I've highlighted in the front, the bulkiest group is isopropyl. In the back, the bulkiest group is methyl. So instead of having them right next to each other, which is called staggered gauche, I'm going to rotate the back so the methyl can come over here and this hydrogen can go, come over here, and this hydrogen can come down there. So I've drawn that up here. The way I think of it is I'm going to keep the front constant or stable, stationary, okay? I'm going to rotate the back. Or you could do it the other way, rotate the front and keep the back stationary. In any case, my largest group in the front and my largest group in the back are anti to each other, so less um, electron repulsion there. You still have repulsion here, methyl and ethyl, but it's going to be better than methyl and isopropyl because isopropyl is really branchy and it's going to repel more. With this one, I'm picturing my eye here looking at carbon 1. So if carbon 1 is here, um, let's draw what's on carbon 1. I've got a bromine, and it doesn't matter what, where you put the bromine. Uh, carbon in the, and then you have hydrogens. Make sure you write hydrogens, otherwise leaving it blank means there's a carbon there. Carbon 2 in the back has a methyl group, so let's draw methyl. And you've also got an ethyl group, okay, because this is a two-carbon chain off of carbon 2. Okay, now you want to evaluate it and see if you happen to draw it in the most stable conformation or whether you have to rotate it and redraw it. Biggest group in the front is bromine. The biggest group in the back is ethyl. Something to consider is if this was more complicated and you had multiple things going on in the front, like another methyl group, um, there are different positions for that methyl group. So you want to consider all the gauche interactions um, or eclipsed interactions if it's not staggered. And there are energy values that you can use to add up to see if there's um, more repulsion in one conformation over another. You'll see practice with that later on. In these four Newman projections, we want to see whether any of them are 2-methylpentane. So what I did was I took the carbon in the front, and I took the carbon in the back, and then I just put these two methyl groups on this first carbon. I put an ethyl group on the back carbon. Um, here, I took the front carbon, and I took the back carbon, and I put an isobutyl group on the back carbon. Remember, isobutyl is the Y with the extra carbon, four carbons total. Then I have the carbon in the front here, the carbon in the back. The carbon in the back has a methyl and a propyl group. The carbon in the front and the carbon in the back. And the front has a methyl group. The back has an isopropyl group. Okay? 
If you look at all of these, they're all 2-methyl pentane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? All right, so summary. We talked about conformations. A molecule can have multiple conformations due to rotation of single bonds. All right, so your job is to try to figure out um, what are those conformations, what are the most stable ones, what are the least stable ones. Um, be able to represent these on a piece of paper as a Newman projection or a sawhorse projection and make a connection to that in 3D. All right, next time we're going to talk about constitutional isomers, which are actually set different molecules from each other, unlike conformations of one molecule.